Here's a question that you probably haven't heard since grade school. How high can you count? Now a math major can see that this is really a question about the nature of the natural numbers. And we're going to see how it can be answered in two different ways, both of which are invaluable tools for your proof toolbox in real analysis. First, that however high you can count, I can always count further. This is known as the Archimedean principle. And that if you start at 1, and for every number that you count, are sure to also count 1 higher you're going to count all the natural numbers, and that's called the principle of induction. We won't dwell for long on the principle of induction, but its precise statement is worth remembering. If S is a set of natural numbers that both contains 1 as an element, and for each of its elements also contains its successor, then we can conclude that S is the entire set of natural numbers. It's like knocking over an infinite set of dominoes by first making sure that the first one falls, we often call that the base case, and then making sure that each one that falls also topples its neighbor, we call that the inductive case. The Archimedean principle declares the endless nature of the natural numbers, saying that n has no upper bound. Or expanding on the definition, for all natural numbers n, there exists a natural number m such that m is greater than n. This seemingly obvious statement is actually pretty valuable if we can replace n not with a natural number, but with a real number. This loses no generality because every real number can be rounded up to the nearest natural. This version of the Archimedean principle is one that you're going to use a lot in your proofs. Suppose that I assert that the set of numbers of the form 1 over 2 to the n is not bounded away from 0. In other words, for any epsilon that I choose, no matter how small epsilon is made, I can always find a number within an epsilon's reach of 0 that has the form 1 over 2 to the n. Now if I rearrange the inequality that we're trying to prove here, we're trying to find an n such that 1 over 2 to the n is less than epsilon, if I rearrange that inequality to solve it for n, I find that I need to find an n which is greater than the base 2 log of 1 over epsilon. How do we know that a natural number n exists which is bigger than the base 2 log of 1 over epsilon? Well, if the base 2 log of 1 over epsilon is a real number, then by Archimedes, such a natural number n must exist that's greater than the base 2 log of 1 over epsilon. That completes our proof, though when we go to write the proof, we're going to write it in the opposite order. This is a common thing that's going to take a little bit of getting used to in our course. To write the proof in the forward direction, we would begin by saying, by the Archimedes principle, there exists a natural number n such that n is greater than the base 2 log of 1 over epsilon. Then for that value of n, we can rearrange this inequality to show that 2 to the n is greater than 1 over epsilon, and taking reciprocals on both sides, 1 over 2 to the n is less than epsilon. And that completes our proof, because we've shown that a number of the form 1 over 2 to the n exists which is less than epsilon.